to gather together today and um, announce that we're filing a, a lawsuit, a civil lawsuit against the Department of Public Safety, specifically the officers in Region 7 DPS. Region 7 is responsible for the Capitol complex. Uh, they're responsible for the safety and security of all Capitol grounds and that, that type of stuff. A uh, little bit of background, local government code 229.001 is very clear that the no municipality can create any law for about guns that is more restrictive than state law. It says nothing about departments, it says nothing about anything. However, our Constitution says that only the legislature can regulate the wearing of arms. That's all arms. Black powder revolvers are arms as well. Unfortunately, uh, Capital DPS has chosen to take it upon themselves to create laws out of thin air. And what that's resulted in is the arrest of several people. Those people are, uh, from your left to my right, is uh, Terry Holcomb. Sorry about that. Uh, A.J. Postel, C.J. Grisham, Jacob Dova, Travis Kinsler, and Joseph Walker. Uh, these all, all the arrests happened between September 13th of 2013 and January of this year. Terry Holcomb was arrested on September 13th. He was outside the Capitol gates as other gentlemen who were carrying AR-15s watched. DPS troopers stated that Mr. Holcomb was carrying a holstered replica back black powder pre-1899 pistol in a manner that calculated alarm in their words. Uh, they arrested Mr. Holcomb, threw him in jail, and he was required to bail out. His case was subsequently dismissed. Uh, Scott Smith, who isn't here, was arrested the same day for the same thing uh, that Terry Holcomb was arrested for. Also charged with disorderly conduct, charges were dismissed. AJ here uh, was arrested on October 26th on Capitol grounds. He was carrying, again, a replica black powder pre-1899 pistol in a holster. Perfectly legal. The troopers initially tried to make him sign a criminal trespass. Um, when he did not sign, they had him arrested for criminal trespass with a deadly weapon. In the process of his arrest, DPS troopers broke several of his ribs, and he was hospitalized and out of work for quite a while. Criminal or CJ, that's me. I was arrested on November 11th. Um, we had gotten tired of this. So we grabbed a, a bunch of veterans. We got some veterans together on Veterans Day to protest the arrest that had happened before us. So on November 11th, on the Capitol steps, I carried a toy gun on my hip and a holster. DPS pressed forward on charges of criminal trespass when I refused to leave, when told to leave, simply by asking what law I was breaking. Those charges were also formally dismissed. So was AJ and um, I also missed Justin, who was also arrested with AJ. Jacob Cordova was arrested the same day as I was for carrying a replica pre-1899 black powder revolver. So same as everybody else, uh, black powder revolver. Travis Kunstley was arrested uh, on February 12th of this year during the legislative session for the criminal or for the offense of criminal trespassing again at the Capitol. He had in his possession a toy dollar store plastic gun with a red tip. Uh, he refused to leave when told to leave and was charged with criminal trespass and he has yet to have charges filed against him so his case is pending. He's been arrested and bailed out but his case is still pending. Finally Joseph Walker at the end there was arrested on April 17th also during the legislative session and DPS uh, arrested him for criminal trespassing again when he simply inquired as to what law was being broken. When DPS could not answer that or refused to answer that they arrested him for refusing to leave public property. He was carrying a blue rubber piece of material in the shape of a gun. Had no operating parts, no moving parts, just a piece of rubber shaped like a gun. What's happened here is DPS, as these charges were thrown out, decided they were going to move the football. When criminal, when uh, disorderly conduct didn't work, they resorted to carrying a deadly weapon, then they went on to criminal trespassing. They figured if they can't stop us because there's no law, they'll just tell us to leave, and if we don't leave, now we're criminally trespassing. So once again, DPS is creating laws out of thin air. So today we filed a lawsuit. The grounds on which that lawsuit was filed are several constitutional violations of both our federal constitution and our state constitution. We filed the officers individually. We're not filing against the department. We are filing against the officers that arrested us individually and their supervisors all the way up to Director McCraw. The, the, or the uh, filing complaint that we have is violations of our First Amendment, our Fourth Amendment, and our Fourteenth Amendment rights under the federal constitution. Under the state constitution, we're suing them under the Eighth, 
9th, 16th, 19th, and 27th section of Article 1 under our Bill of Rights. Those are the allegations. That's what we're suing them for. And our, our goal is to put a stop to police abuse of our rights. The, the legislature, ironically, passed open carry this session. We're going to be able to legally open carry actual modern handguns starting January 1st. And yet, they've been arresting people for carrying rubber pieces of molding shaped like a gun. So um, I think the case is going to work out in our favor, and we hope to put a stop to law enforcement thinking they can create laws out of thin air. And does anybody else have anything to say? Our, our attorney is Millie Thompson. Uh, she's out of New Braunfels. I think she's here in the Austin area somewhere. Um, so I'll take any questions. Do you, you think uh, DPS troopers abuse their authority on each of these occasions? Well, absolutely, because even after the charges were being dropped, because the DA refused to take them because there was no law to, to prosecute us on. And yet, in spite of these charges constantly being dropped over and over and over again, DPS continued to arrest us over and over and over again. And the idea was that eventually we get tired of being arrested and just stop doing what we were doing, which we did. We stopped for a time because we were pursuing legal action. We had to wait for all the charges to get dropped. Um, and so that's, you know, that's the case. It's, it's DPS thinks that that house is theirs. That capital belongs to me and you and everybody watching this and everybody standing up here. What do you think uh, needs to be done next? I mean, do they need better training to, to understand what the laws are? Well, the problem is they know what the laws are. They just don't care. They're creating, if you go in there and you, you are able to strip search any DPS trooper, they will have a card on them about how to handle open carry activists. And, and for years, I have come to the Capitol with my rifles and done Second Amendment rallies on the Capitol steps without issue. Suddenly in 2013, when open carry, when we as a collective group make open carry an issue in this state, suddenly DPS wants to put a stop to it. Suddenly they're uncomfortable with people not only carrying rifles, but carrying holstered black powder revolvers. So for years we could carry so-called assault weapons onto the Capitol grounds, but as of 2013, they decided they didn't like it anymore. And you want to understand how nefarious their behavior is, because it is that. Um, when you meet with the commander of DPS, the lieutenant, and DPS legal counsel, along with the state preservation board, and you have an approved gathering on Capitol grounds, you have permission to be there to have the event, and they come after you as soon as you get out of the parking lot to start harassing you and then ultimately arresting just the leader of that organization, you know something seriously wrong. Um, that, that meeting is, is well established, it's out on video, we had permission and yet they still targeted. So that clearly shows intent. And what's interesting about Terry and Scott's case as well as mine and AJ's case is we were arrested for pre-1899 black powder revolvers but present in our groups were people with AR-15s and AK-47s who were able to just go about their merry way. Do you think they feel threatened because now, you know, a lot more people are carrying around guns? It's not only them now. They weren't worried about the AR-15s. Right. right. They better feel but in threatened. in 2013 no, they, versus go ahead. Well, before. I would, I would like to add that at the Capitol and on the grounds there that there's actually a speed pass line if you have your CHL to, to go through, you know, the metal detectors as a speed pass with your handgun. So at the Capitol, you're surrounded every day by individuals armed all over the place. This is nothing new to have armed individuals at the Capitol, as it shouldn't be. You know, our, our uh, Texans fought for those rights, and we should uh, preserve those rights. And it's uh, unjust to see them stripped away from law-abiding citizens. Perfect. Thank you. All right.